I came to the U.S. when I was 21. I got involved in campus organizing from human rights to environmental justice. And that activism helped me to come out to myself as gay. I feared going back to Malaysia, my home country. Malaysia has a poor human rights record, and homosexuality is punishable by caning. Right around then, Attorney General Janet Reno expanded the basis for political asylum to include gays, lesbian, and transgender people. I applied, and after a six-year struggle, I was granted political asylum. It took me several more years to get my green card. And since there wasn't a safe way for me to re-enter the US without a green card, I didn't see my family for 14 years until my mom came to visit in 2006. When my mom was in the US, she would tell my friends a story about me when I was about this age. <laughs> it was Lunar New Year, and she took me out to buy new clothes. I kept bugging her to take me to the boys' department, and she kept trying to convince me to pick a dress. And after a few rounds of negotiation, I won. So even though this story is about my gender identity, my mom told this story to relate to my sexual orientation. It's common to conflate gender identity with sexual orientation because both are associated to one's gender. We are assigned a sex at birth based on a sex binary, male, female. But how we feel internally, our gender identity, and how we express ourselves externally, our gender expression, are not determined by our assigned birth sex. I came out to my mom when I was 25 as gay. But I didn't tell her that I'm transgender, meaning that my gender identity and gender expression does not fall neatly in the man-woman category and do not align with my assigned birth sex. My mom passed away about a year ago, and I never had the chance to tell her that this fall, I started taking medical steps to transition. Sometimes I wonder if that's for the better, because her knowing that I'm transgender would have caused her a lot of stress, worry, and anxiety. You see, simple activities can be agonizing for transgender people. I experienced harassment in the bathrooms all my life. So I go through a mental process whenever nature calls. To avoid the potential for harassment, I would ask myself, do I come across guy enough to use the men's bathroom? Or do I feel threatened by the men in this place that I would take the risk of being yelled at in the women's bathroom, which ha happens often? If this is a new frontier for you, I humbly offer some tips on being a good ally. Tip number one, assume that everyone knows what bathrooms they're in. <laughs> if you don't go through this mental process like I do, you're most likely cisgender. Cisgender means that your gender Identity and gender expression more or less aligns with your assigned birth sex. Now, you can also use your cisgender privilege to help a non-gender conforming friend. So my cisgender friends sometimes will scope out the bathrooms before I have to go. Is it multiple stall? Is it single stall? This may not prevent me from harassment, but it helps me to be ready for what I may face. 
Gender conformity is so ingrained in our society. Take pronouns, for example. He, she, his, hers. We pick the pronoun based on someone's assigned birth sex, not their gender identity. <coughs> so here is tip number two. Do not assume that everyone goes by he or she. Honor preferred gender pronouns if you know them. And if you don't, just use their names. And it's OK to ask someone for their preferred gender pronoun once you've established a relationship with them. Most of us find going through the security at the airport unpleasant. In 2007, the TSA started to require gender identification, making an unpleasant experience even more agonizing for transgender people. 41% of transgender people do not have ID reflecting their gender identity, and I'm one of them. There are many reasons for this. Costs, surgical requirement, and plain old being denied by government agencies. So I'm extra careful when I walked, before I walked through the airport security about emptying my pockets to avoid any possible scrutiny. But imagine this. The TSA officer addresses you as madam. Your driver's license says you are male. And your gender identity is feminine. Now imagine walking through that airport scanner and triggering it and the humiliation you face as the TSA officer pats you down and asks you questions about your gender. I'm often asked questions that are extremely personal, questions that are really none of anyone else's business. So here's tip number three. Ask yourself, would I want someone else to ask me that? So in June, I was sworn in as a citizen and this past election was the first time I voted in the US. <laughs> One of the most precious rights of being a citizen, but a right that many are trying to take away. Voter suppression is not a big topic here in Washington and Oregon where I'm a resident, because these are the only two states that require vote by mail. But voter suppression is very real for 25,000 transgender people. There are 13 states that ask for photo ID at voting polls. Remember, four out of 10 transgender people do not have IDs reflecting their gender. So it means that they might be prevented from exercising their right to vote. Transgender people also face difficulties on the job. Nine out of 10 transgen transgender people have experienced harassment, mistreatment, and discrimination on the job. I work for a social justice organization that's not only transgender friendly, we help other advocacy organizations to pass laws to protect transgender people from discrimination and extend health care benefits to public, to transgender public employees. Now, we can all help create a better workplace for transgender people. And you can start by not tolerating any anti-transgender remarks or humor at your workplace and anywhere else. Transgender people also face violence, especially transgender people of color, sometimes fatal. A transgender person is murdered every three days worldwide. And many more are likely unreported. As TEDx and attendees, I know that you're already open to thinking in entirely new ways. So I challenge you to think about gender when you use the bathrooms, when you're at the airport, or when you're introduced to someone new. 
start thinking outside the gender binary. Perhaps I've mistaken about my mom, mistaken that she told that story to relate to my sexual orientation. Perhaps deep inside, she knew that I'm transgender. She's a mom after all, and mothers know these things. Thank you. Thank you.